Okay, so uh, last video I showed you kind of what a spot illustration sketch looked like, how you can modify it in Photoshop, how you could ink it and then scan the ink line in for cleaner shapes. That's what I have here. But then the problem with inking is sometimes lines get a little too thick, like this upper lip did. And I could go in and clean it up in Photoshop. I made a blank layer here. I have a paintbrush. I'm doing it with 100% opaque white with a hard, like a 90% hard brush that's pressure sensitive. I'm using my tablet. And then I can go in and I can kind of curl the lip and thin it out, right? But notice how every little jitter I make is picked up, right? So that can be okay. So that's an option. And you can clean up things in Photoshop that way as well. Some people even spend a lot of time trying to ink things back in in Photoshop. But there's a better way. Illustrator simply has better tools um, for kind of smoothing things out. And so I'm going to show you how to ink within Illustrator as well. But it isn't a bad idea to have like one layer where you're just painting with white. Come on, why are you not working now? Oh, that's on. That's why. It's not bad to have one layer kind of on top of everything where you're painting with white. And it might save you a little time in Illustrator cleaning up those shapes. But don't you don't need to be too picky about it. So I'm just kind of scanning it over. Remember, I scanned it at 600 pixels per inch because my sketch was pretty small. So my actual raster image is 5 by 5 inches by 600. And that's roughly the same as 10 by 10 inches, which is kind of what you want a t-shirt design to be by 300 pixels per inch. And then sometimes like ink puddles at the end of a line. This is kind of the hand done nature of it, but you can clean that up with your in Photoshop if you want. Like right here, especially where two lines come together. So you don't have to worry about that in Illustrator as much. But remember, this isn't a logo. Not everything needs to be perfectly dialed in and perfect. Okay, so now this is ready to bring into Illustrator. I wanted to point out something. So when I sketched, notice I kind of scribbled in certain things that I thought would be filled in dark, like the pupils and the shadows on the horns. But then when I inked, I pretty much, even the nostril, I pretty much outline everything I can. And that gives me more flexibility in Illustrator. And this curve is not as smooth as I like, but I'm not going to go in with Photoshop and try to clean that up. Because it's just going to get bumpier and bumpier. So taking this, so there's going to be certain things we have to fix in Illustrator. Taking this, I'm now going to save it as a JPEG to the desktop. So not a Photoshop document. And I'm going to call it my name test to live trace. I always call these test files because they're just transitional files. It's a JPEG. It's 600 pixels per inch by 5 by 5 inches. Even at the largest uh, quality, it's still only 1.6 megabytes. It's mostly black and white, but it's still an RGB file, so supporting full color. And then I can close Photoshop for the time being. Shut that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that, that test file that I cleaned up, and I'm going to open it with Illustrator. Just like I, we did when we onion skinned over our logo sketches last time. Illustrator can take a little while to open. So I'm going to tell you what, what we're doing. So what we're going to do is take that ink line and we're going to tell Illustrator 
to make it into a vector. We're going to tell it to only look at the black lines and turn those into full paths, closed paths. And we're going to, going to tell it to ignore the white and just leave that empty. And that's called live tracing, taking a raster file and vectorizing it, turning it into a vector. But then the other technique I'm going to show is how you can simply take a drawing, even just a low quality pencil drawing like this one my son did that he wants a t-shirt of, which is pretty clever. He calls it the unicorn. It's a little piece of corn and he says, I work alone. <coughs> of course, he's dyslexic, so it's adorable how he misspells a lot. But anyway. So instead of trying to ink that by hand, I'm going to ink that right in Illustrator and try to kind of match this, this way of looking. <laughs> so my inked JPEG came into Illustrator. It came into a default artboard space. Remember, Illustrator size doesn't matter. Let's need the pinwheel of death to go away. All right. So the first thing I can do is I can click on it. And I can hold down shift and option and enlarge it just so I can see it a little bit better on the artboard. But remember, this artboard only mattered if we were going to print it out, out of Illustrator. I hit return. <coughs> Actually, I don't even need to hit return. This is still a raster based image. You see the pixels there. The difference is once I click it with the large selection tool and you get this blue box around it, then I'll get these live trace options at the top. And you want to go to what's called image trace and then drop down to the one that is black and white logo. And that's going to make it only black and white that it's converting to. It's going to give you a preview and you can look at it and wow, that really cleaned it up. But the problem, this is black and white shapes right now. So I want to get into the, the more precise settings. So I click here the image trace panel, which you can also get to with view, I'm sorry, with window and image trace. I thought. <laughs> oh, right here. Yep. So what we want is the preset of black and white logo, but we actually want to go to advanced options. And the one we always want is to ignore the white. So by ignoring the white, that means that this vector that we're outputting now has only black shapes. <coughs> now, these presets work really well because I cleaned it up ahead of time in Photoshop. There's little things that need to be worked with, like the O's not that smooth. But mostly, it captured it really well. So defaults here worked well. But if I wanted to, I could play with these dials. I'll put it back onto white so I can see that more clearly. And each of these dials relates to ways of kind of simplifying it, right? So for instance, I can make the threshold more and then it will allow for more of that gray kind of boldness if I want the line work thicker to come through. But the problem is that really shrinks my teeth. It makes it maybe a little too thick in terms of line work. So if I go threshold less, it's going to make the line work thinner. And actually, I think I like that versus right in the middle. Yes, yeah, so I think maybe about right there. So you want to kind of play with these settings, figure out what you want. We're going to be coloring behind it, but you want some nice, strong line work. Um, the number of paths, this is at 50%. If you say you want a lot of paths, it's going to make more and more complex shapes. And I definitely don't want that, right? And if you say less than 50%, it's going to oversimplify some shapes. You know, like that is very smooth and round, but it might be a little too... 
yeah, it's like makes two strong decisions. So if I go right in the middle at 50, it will do a better job working between those two. The corners, same thing. How many corners do you want in your paths? I actually want quite a few, so it's at 75%. If I went down, you'll see how that changes it. This is all a preview. And it will just round things out that I don't necessarily want rounded out like those edges on the fort. And then noise, noise isn't much of an issue for mine because I cleaned up by inking it instead of using pencil, I cleaned up a lot of like little things not needed. But notice that little blip at the edge, which I kind of like. If I increase or decrease the noise, it will either allow more of that or it will get rid of all of it, right? So I'm gonna put it right kind of where it was. So I can zoom in, this is just previewing the vector. It is not a vector until I hit expand, right? So once I hit expand, now you'll see all the individual paths. And then that allows me to do things like smooth them. Like my O needs to be smoothed on the outside and on the inside. On the outside and on the inside. But this is a good way to do this illustration, which is meant to look kind of like a sports mascot kind of spot illustration or a fictitious team that might be called the Forking Bulls. So I want it to look a little hand done. I don't want it perfectly clean, like it's a logo. So I don't want to over smooth. I want a little of that kind of hand done weirdness to it. And if I need to redraw something, I can use the pencil tool to do that. Command Z if I overdo it. So the problem with the smooth tool, it tends to make things just smoother. It doesn't even out proportions or anything. So sometimes you need the pencil tool for that. Remember, you can double click on the pencil and set it to be more smooth than accurate. <coughs> Oops. But you have to start on the path and end on the path you know, for that to work. And I just do it in spots because I really like how the teeth turned out. Yeah, I think it traced over really well. So this was the one line I was going to change. This would be good with the pencil line. Bring that curve down, but I have to start through the path and end through the path. Maybe slim it down a little. I'm having trouble with this angle. Ah. It's great to be able to use Command Z. And to me, even though it's a bit of a hassle doing this in Illustrator, it is an improvement um, from trying to just do it all with Photoshop. Gives you a little bit more control. <coughs> so this is live tracing. And if you kind of prep your file well, it works really well. If you don't prep your file, it's a, a major mess, and I'm going to show you that next. And so there are other options. But no matter how clean your file becomes, when you live trace, you need to be prepared 